All right, so um, we're going to do some anti-differentiation with partial fractions. Uh, but first of all, you need to know a little bit. Uh, now, if you were going to integrate something like this, f of x over ax plus b, cx plus d, uh, plus d, that's where f of x is a linear, linear function. So something like mx plus c. Um, you could break it up. It's really difficult to integrate that just as it is. Possible, maybe? Um, an easier way to do it is to break it up because this can be broken up into a over ax plus b plus capital B over cx plus, b, uh, plus d. Now, the, the reason that works is because if you want to add those together, you need to make the denominators the same and you make them the same by multiplying them together. And if you multiply them together, you'd get that. And then you'd have to multiply that by that and that by that. You'd add those together and you'd get f of x. So it's important to note, if you see this, a linear function over this, this, it's a very distinct pattern. You can break it up into a partial fraction. Now there is another related um, partial fraction that we can break up. So here's our other partial fraction uh, transformation, I guess you could call it. Uh, f of x over ax plus b squared equals ax plus b squared over a plus b ax plus b. Uh, now, you might be looking at that and thinking, that's not going to work. You're going to end up with ax plus b squared, uh, ax plus b, ax plus b cubed. But you can still add these two together just by multiplying this one by ax plus b. Now, what that means for this whole dance is that in this case, a and b are probably just going to be integers, just numbers. Uh, but in this case, A will probably be a number, and B is probably going to be a, uh, a linear function, uh, mx plus c. So just be aware of that, but these are going to be very, very useful moving forward.